Our student, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video. And this is going to be the position that we're talking about today, which as I was drawing it, I said to myself, I should have used a simpler position, but I'm going to use this one anyway. So I didn't show you, I'm not showing you how I drew this, but we're going to be talking about uh, wanting to draw or for your first steps learning to draw and uh, about drawing books that are out there. Now, there, I'm sure that if you are an artist, you probably have a drawing book. You might not use it anymore, but I'm sure when you first started out, you brought a drawing book because we had no idea what we're doing when we, when we first start out. But a lot of the things in the drawing books really don't work for a number of things. A lot of the lessons, a lot of the showings in the drawing book really don't work for a number of things. For instance, there are some drawing books that teach you how to kind of use the, the stick figure. They'll do this, you know, and then they have the points for the knee and so forth. And the elbows. And then, you know, the head. You know, and, that, and that's good if you're just going to draw, you know, somebody just like standing around. But for something like this, it would be impossible to use something like that. Then you have some that use a square. They'll, they'll say the square. And then, you like, if you if you turn the hip, the, the, the square moves a little bit. You connect it here. And then you have the head and then the arms, however they put the arms. But the problem is the body's not square. So if you're drawing square, you're going to have to round it off eventually. So that really doesn't really work as well. So you have the, which is the better, you have the ones that use the torso. I mean, the, the, the ovals, the ovals, which is, you know, really better for you to do. But they leave kind of like this gap in the middle and then they leave, they do this torso and they have like the leg which are cylinders and they really don't tell you about cylinders a lot of um books don't tell you about cylinders and i think they might have this and this and cylinder which is what they need to go into more more of the shapes that are that make up the body but i don't really think that they a lot of people do and my camera is zoomed in really close or close enough for it to blur so if it blurs then you know forgive it and then there's another thing that I see a lot. They'll say, okay, your, your, your body should be, you know, eight heads tall. I mean, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just showing you. You know, oh, the body should be eight heads tall. How tall is that? How am I going to put eight heads here when he's leaning down? So if you're drawing um, comics or if you're drawing something that's got action to it, a lot of this stuff will not really help you. If you're just drawing a position, you know, just cool position, the guy standing here, you know, with his gun up in the air, then yeah, the, the eight head thing or the nine head thing or how many ever heads would work. The, the little stick figure guy would work. Uh, maybe the square guy, if he doesn't move, if you don't turn him, the square might work. You know, so th there's a lot of things that, when we're young, we don't really see in in books. We're like, oh, I like that. They have a couple of extra nice, cool pictures in them. And you're like, oh, that's, that's nice. And then they'll have, you know, the simple, the simplistic drawings that we're supposed to be able to do and turn it into, you know, that cool character that they show you, that finished product. But we don't think about that. We don't think, is this really going to work? Is it really, really going to work, especially for you? Now, I don't know your your skill level or the way that you draw you might have got have gotten one of these books that teach you how to draw a square and there are times when a square will work or a rectangle will work but when you are twisting and turning and bending it just it, sometimes it doesn't work so to start with the oval is probably the best way to do it but i have simplified that this is for me because i taught myself how to draw when i was young and in the early 60s before you know comic books was like really 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 popular and there was no you know comic book teaching lessons anywhere around so the thing that I do is I will start out with the torso and you should always 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 start out with the torso come down and there is your waist which is just this right here and then you have your hips which is this here 
And this is just an oval. Anybody can draw an oval. That can be a zero, a zero, or an O, whichever rounder size you use. This is just rectangle, rectangle. And I try to tell people to draw shapes because you're not scared of doing a shape, you know, or, or a letter. And I have videos where I showed you how to draw a body using just letters, you know. And I say, if you can write, then you can draw. So that means everyone that can write can actually draw, but, you know, it's not everybody's forte or they don't want to draw. And then cylinders, you know, your cylinder. This, this one I will do an oval because it's so fat at the thigh, top thigh, I'll do an oval. And then I will do more of a cone. I used to call it a triangle. And that's the same thing uh, with the arms. So if I did a T, the letter T, it comes across. You have something left over. You have this little piece left over. And I do circle, oval, and cone. And I call it a triangle because it's going to be rounded. Once you turn it, it's going to be round. If you do these shapes, and I show you this in my drawing book, I'm working on another drawing book. I just have to get off my lazy tail and go ahead and do it. Bring that up. The chin should be right here at the top of this circle right here. This little circle chin should be here at the top of that circle. And then your neck right here is going to be a V from here to the top and then up like that. So you have these points, chop it off where your arms, your hands are going to go. And that helps you, same thing with the feet, chop it off where your feet are going to go and your feet are just half triangles. And so that kind of gives you that shape <clears throat> that you need already when you start to draw your character. And of course I said, you know, it's, it's easy to draw straight up and down, but once you get the shapes together and you kind of outline it, not going too far, you'll see that you have basically that shape that you need to draw that person it goes in, out, out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So you already have that. Now I tell people, don't try to just, you know, muscularize somebody just because you want it to be, you know, mus muscular, muscular. You don't want they got to be muscular. Or you just because you want this, this character to be so, so big and muscular <clears throat> until you learn how the muscles actually go. Then you can add muscle to it. But for that, you already basically have that shape that you want. Now, when you start to lean somebody forward or turn them or twist them, that is a different story. But if you know how to take every one of these shapes, here's a circle. If you take a circle and you turn it upside down, what is it? It's a circle. If you take a circle and turn it to the side, what is it? It's a circle. Same thing. That So that, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, oval, basically kind of almost the same thing. You take it, if you're lifting it up, just think of it as like one of those, an aspirin or a capsule or something like that. And if you lift it up, if I turn it all the way up, it's going to be this um, cir a circle. So if I put a color or point right here and lift it all the way up, it's going to be like that. So if I tilted it up just like halfway. You see that point was going to be kind of like that. Like that. So you're basically, you're shortening this thing and almost turning it into this circle. So with the oval, with the oval of the torso, it's going to be kind of the same thing. Now, the only difference is in the torso is you have all these other muscles there that you have to kind of contend with, especially this part up here. So if I am drawing something like this, the first thing I'm going to do the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see if that has a tilt in it, the back. Is it straight on? Is it tilted? A lot of times you can add more action to it. If I tilted him a little bit over to the, the left or the right, it was, gave him a little more action to it, but I did it straight across. So if the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do <clears throat> this and oval like this. This is going to be the top from here on up. It's not going to be down here. So that's going to determine uh, how much this person is leaning. That's going to be the first part to determine how much this person is leaning over. Now you have his your you have your collarbone right here, and you have your traps. I'm just going to say shoulders for now, but I, I like to name them so that people can understand later on and get that um, jump ahead of everybody. 
when they say, oh, that's your trapezius muscle, or that's your delts, and, you know, that's your, your, your tricep. And, it, you know, just, it just sounds good when you're young and you know this stuff. So you have your neck, which is just another upside down house. Here, 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 here. Okay, same thing as this. There, 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 there. Upside down house. Except this is going to basically kind of define where your um, your delts are going. So if I have my neck here, then I'm going to have my delts going here. So I'm going to have this little extra space left over. And my head is going to be on top of that neck. Now, I always make the neck, if I'm doing a superhero, that neck and that side of that face are going to be on the same line just straight down so what I was trying to do is get to this you have this that when you lean over it is going to take a different shape it is going to take on a completely different shape well not a completely different shape but you're going to have um, you're going to have shapes that you have to contend with so first of all you're going to have that hole where that neck is right there but secondly and most importantly, you're going to have this collarbone right here. This collarbone right here. And that's going to determine just how much this person is leaning over by um, the shape that you take, the, the amount of turn that it goes. You know, it could go like this. He's still leaning over. But when you go straight across, the person is basically looking forward. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I got my glasses on and they're dirty. So, but once I get this, and I know that I have to get my collarbone somewhere, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to add this little piece at the bottom of that. I'll probably square it off or just kind of flatten it off. Then you can really tell how much a, the person is leaning over. So I'm going to have this. Let's do, let's do that again. <clears throat> I'm a fast talker, and I just had some Doritos. And you know, Doritos just break apart in your throat and it just hang around and it chokes you when you try to talk. So this is going to be the top of my shoulder, okay? So I'm going to, this guy's leaning over, so I'm going to give him this, like that. So that's almost like taking a cylinder. So if this is a cylinder, and I'm going to tilt the cylinder over a little bit, it's the same thing, same thing. It's just shapes. Master those shapes for a minute. Stop trying to draw superheroes, and uh, if you can't get the superheroes right, you always draw them, and you're saying to yourself, something's not right, something's not right. Stop for a minute, and just draw your shapes. Draw shapes. I say that, but it's like everybody wants to eat that dessert before they eat their vegetables. You have to eat the vegetables first. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You have to eat your vegetables first. Let me take a quick sip of water so my voice can change back. So, <clears throat> once again, start with your shapes. All the sh only shapes you are actually going to need are your circles, a circle, an oval, uh, that upside down house, as I say. And who, who doesn't know how to draw an upside down house? Flip it over and draw it. Uh, circle, oval, your cone or triangle it's not going to be a cone until you you start to show um perspective and <clears throat> your feet are like triangles cut in half so this would be one foot this would be the other foot here's my leg here's my leg and the yeah i said the oval so it's not a lot of shapes that you have to contend with and this little rectangle which is going to be your waist this is going to be your waist because you have your love handles that goes down into the crotch and you have this mountain here so you're going to have this because your bone is like this and you're, it's going to sit on that love handle so i what i do <clears throat> i just use this little rectangle as i call the tuna can because it's going to be round once you start to angle it shape like a tuna can I tell people maybe I was eating a tuna sandwich that day or something, and I, and I just kind of saw it. So, but the thing is, you're going to put a belt. Why am I trying to make this tuna can look like a tuna can? <laughs> you're going to put a belt. Most times, you're going to put a belt right there. So this will take the place of your belt. This will be where your belt will be if it, if it, if it wears a belt. So that's why I use that, that little rectangle. Now, if I am, um, and I don't have a, a finished drawing with me, 
if I am doing like somebody with skin tight, then I will do this. This um, Well, I always put that love handle, which is called the obliques. I'll put those obliques. Let me see if I can draw it real quick. This is your oval. This is your waist. This is your upside down house. And I usually get the waist and the hips mixed up. So let me get a smaller pen. Can you see this? Good. I might say my glasses are dirty and when I use a pencil, it blurs from my overhead light. So it's going to be like this, this, this is your rib cage. So your, your obliques are going to be like this. They come down and they go in and your stomach comes down like this. So these are your obliques or your love handles and then it goes into your crotch and then your legs are like you see just some buttocks like right there and you see your legs. Because your legs are not that really high. I kind of that high out, but you'll see some a little bit of hip right there. But in most cases they don't show it because you know you'll have shorts or something on. So I was going somewhere and I truly lost it. I don't know, but it, I, I think it was pretty good. Whatever it was, maybe it'll come <laughs> it'll come back. Oh well, okay, yeah. So as I say, I always draw this when I'm drawing the anatomy, but if I'm drawing uh my costume or whatever. You won't see that. You won't see it. So just for me, I'll do it. Like I said, I'll do it when I when I'm drawing, especially to teaching. I'll just do the obliques. Because what's I say? Once you dress a character, you won't see half of those muscles anyway. So if you have a, somebody with armor or something on. This is about the best I would do as far as adding muscle. I mean, if it was a thick person, I would give him some size. But this is all you really need is just this basic shape. And you can even do less than that because if I put the armor on the guy or whoever it is, all of this stuff is going to get covered up anyway. So however I put armor on this guy like this, and let's just say he's got a whatever, a sword. And say so he's got the knee pads and he's got nice armor boots on, steel toe armor boots on, and some kind of design, some bolts or whatever, and then um, some kind of armor leggings, leggings, armor leg plate covers. So you see how much of the body you won't see. All you need to do is get that shape of that body, however that person is, is turning or, or jumping or whatever, and then put that armor on them. So you got a sword, you got one sword, but go this way, Brian, if you're chopping or blocking, whatever. So that's basically all you need to do is get the shape of the body then your arm is going to cover. So if I'm like doing his abs, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give him some, his abs. Oh, his, he, you know, this guy, he, he worked out. He got the blow, the bow flex and he working out, you know, seven times a day. He got the muscle and the, the chest is just ripped. The second I put the armor on this guy, you won't see any of that. So stop wasting time trying to put so many tight muscles on your character. If he's got some armor, if he's wearing a coat or if he's wearing whatever, the only time you should actually want to draw the muscle to be seen is if the person is as a one skin tight piece, uh, skin tight on, or if he's got like a short sleeve shirt on, you know, but at any part that's covered up, like you got a wristband, you know, short sleeve shirt, then I would do like, you know, the bicep, you know, the tricep, because that just shows, you know, he's, he's muscular. And if you put the right lumps, you put the curves on them, then everybody will know, oh, that guy's got muscles under all of that shirt or whatever it is so yeah again don't worry about muscles yet yes study the muscles to see how they go but when you're first starting out especially if your character if you're doing a knight or somebody in a space suit or whatever don't just do the basic body so what was i saying about this okay so i'll do that i'll do this this is going to determine how much this person is leaning over and since i'm starting to get into this let me let me go ahead and use a separate piece of paper. So whatever picture I see, I'm going to look at the torso and is his shoulders turned. 
So I'm going to do this. I'm like, okay, this guy's leaning over. This is the front part that we see. Then it's going to be the bottom part, depending on how much stomach you see. Let me use my red pencil because I'm better at that and I can see better. This, this, how much stomach I'm going to see. Then you figure out, okay, where is, now you can use this as the point or it could be up higher. You figure out where that collarbone is going to be. The collarbone is going to come off and then you're going to have that delt right in the center, that circle, half circle, right in the center of that line right there. Now, if the arms went back a little bit more, if the delts go back a little bit more, you have to bring this back a little bit more. Like that. So wherever this V is, that circle has to be right there in the center. All right. So if that shoulder was tilted, I would do something like this. Brian, and you're drawing all over your finished paper, finishing paper. So if that thing was turned, that thing, if, if his shoulders were turned, I would do more like this. That that would be that angle. I make sure I got that angle right. There's my camera. It's blurred. I don't know how long it was blurred. Hopefully it wasn't too long, but I'll have my angle. Then I'll still do the same thing like this. That little piece. So if um, this is gonna be straight, so this is gonna be straight and it comes down because this is just bone. All of this is bone. Do, 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 which is a good one. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. Since I started, all of this is bone right here. So this is not going to twist. This is going to turn. When you start, when you get past this, that's when it can twist. That's when it can twist until it gets to the hips. Then it's straight again. So wherever that house is, it's going to twist and it's going to go straight down to that house. Just like that. Top of that house, the roof of that house. So this is the only part that's going to twist in that body so if i'm doing this i'm going to come straight down so if this is where my point is uh, where the two collarbones come together like right here this is going to be the center of that chest right there now how much of that chest is going to be shown now usually i'll use that whole oval but i didn't so i'm going to have it this and remove this third so from here, I'm going to have this. How much of that chest is going to be shown? It also determines how much that person is leaning over. So because this body is round, this chest is going to be round. So everything on this is going to be round except these collarbones, which are collarbones. They have a, it's like a, um, it has a little bend to it, but don't worry about that because nobody's going to focus on this collarbone. It truly has a little bend to it. So this is going to come up and it, this connects with that ball. There's a little circle. The bottom line of your chest, and anytime I draw from an angle, I like to have it like one piece. Instead of like cutting it here and cutting it there, it's just one piece. So now you're going to have your rib cage again, which is here. And that is just, just, just. So if, if I'm doing this, I'll bring mine down a lot, a lot of times, which is not right, but that's just me. I'll catch myself. Here's my chest, here's my collarbone, here's my delt. Your rib cage is like right up under that chest. Sometimes I'll have it down here, which is like not right, but I mean, it's just right up under that chest. So if I lean this, tilted this forward, it would look like this. And since that collar, that, that rib cage is right up under here, I would have this curve like this. Like that. So because this opening, of course, your abs are going to be there. So I'll put that first ab right there and then I'll put that if I can see that it, again it depends on how much how much is leaning over how much is leaning this is why I don't have my camera zoomed in because I'll go like 30 minutes and it'll be blurred the second ab like right there and again depends on how much you're leaning over and then a little of that so the more you lean over your your I'm gonna say your buttocks if I drew somebody leaning over here, this is from the side, leaning over from the side, here's his buttocks like right here. This is going to be his, his legs, his leg, like that. So, again, I just lost, I just lost it. Oh, so this is going to be higher when you lean over. It's not going to be down here. It's going to, depending on how much you, you lean over, it's going to be high up here. So your hips or your buttocks is going to, where's my blue? Where's my blue? It would be great. Great, great, great. I can't find it. It will be a great um, 
example. Give me a second. Let me find my blue pen. And believe me, believe it, I had this place cleaned up. Here it is. The other day. So, where am I? Okay, so your buttocks are going to be like this. It's going to be kind of like this. And then your legs are going to come down. <clears throat> However, your legs are going to come down. So, I have this guy. Anyway, your buttocks are going to be like this. This is going to be the buttocks here, up high. So, you're not going to have it down here like this. You're not going to have your hips down here because this is tucked under. See how this is tucked under here? So, your chest is going to be like this. How's your chest? It's going to be like this. You have this um, rib part right here, and then your stomach right here, right here, and right here. And you see how it goes up under? So if I was looking right here at this, this is my eye line right here. I'm looking at this guy right here at, from this angle. I'm not going to be see, able to see up under here because he's tilting over and he has that, that curve. So you won't be able to see like that third. Maybe sometimes you won't even be able to see that second set of abs. So, and of course, like I said, the buttocks is going to be up high, up higher. So it's going to come through here, and then you're going to have your, um, the hips, the buttocks, the hips, this, because your legs are kind of shaped like this, combined with the buttocks. You're going to have your hip right here. Now let me switch back to red and get rid of some of all of this mess that I'm drawing. Uh, where was it? Okay, anyway, it's going to be high up on the side. Let's just put it that way. It's going to be high up on the side, and it depends on how much of, um, again, how much that person is bent over. You have that upside down house, and if the legs are spread apart, then you're going to flare this out. It's not going to be straight up and down. You're going to flare it apart, especially if it's a woman. You're going to have to flare it apart a little bit more. So you're just going to have that house, right? And since this is kind of straight, go straight down. If it was leaning like this, and this is going to be straight, this is going to come straight down, and then it's going to curve from below that rib like that. Then I'm going to have my hips out, and then it could go down like this. But if you want to keep that upside down house, not making it too wide. Now, it's going to still be, it's going to have that shape, that upside down house shape. Am I actually recording? Yes, I am until you do something with the legs like this leg can go out here and this won't it really won't change this too much because the leg is shaped like this you're going to have that that um that muscle and I'm, I'm going to find out what the name of that muscle is here but with this leg here i brought it up so again working with your uh shapes and learning how to tilt the shape because what am I saying? Your thigh is going to be an oval like this. So if you lift that oval up like we were doing here, lift that oval up, it's going to be more kind of want to be like a cylinder kind of thing or I don't know, you can call it a, a teardrop or raindrop when it gets, you know, that like that. But it's still going to be round in the back. You're going to have more in the front, less roundness in the back. So when it comes up all the way up like this, it's going to be just a circle like that one whole circle and then you're going to have your knee in front of that and I've showed this a number of times but somebody might new might somebody that might be seeing it for the first time put it that way so you're going to have that opening for that that cylinder that you just did that oval which you just raised up into a circle so you're going to have that opening it's like doing this where was it this this cone this cone the point Okay, chop that off. You're going to have a hole right here and a hole right there in a cone. So if I did the cone, it's going to look like this, like that. Everybody can agree on that. Everybody can see that. That's going to be the same as your leg, except where is this point going to be? Or where is this circle, this front circle? Where is that going to be placed on here? So wherever you place it determines wherever that knee is going to go. So I have it up high, so it will be like this. That's why you see all this bottom thigh. Now I can do it over here. You see all this inner thigh, depending on what leg. And then, so that's something else you have to work out is doing that because a lot of times I'll do people like seated, like this to say, what leg, what foot would that be? And then this other foot would be down here. 
Uh, this is going to be, I don't know what foot I'm, I'm doing. Let's just say this. And then this other knee is right here, which is just so wrong. But you'll see that thigh, yeah, because that, that's not, the legs have to be closer together. And this one have to, it would have to go up more. This one would have to go up more, and then it would be here. So do a leg crossing, a leg crossing. Shown in some other videos. I don't want to get too far off the subject. Uh, and yeah, so this one came up. This leg is going to come up. So let's just, let's work on this. So this leg is going to go out. And you'll see a lot of the same positions. You will see kind of a lot of the same positions. Uh, just tweaked a little bit. But what is most important is the torso, basically, to get for because you have to stabilize the body with the torso. You balance it with your legs and your arms. So let's just say we put this leg here, and this leg could have come forward a little bit more. If I wanted this leg to the side completely, you would not see that opening for the knee. The knee would come straight down like I do, like I have it. Now, if I wanted to be to the front, you would see some indication of that knee because that knee is square off, and then this would turn into more of a cylinder. This part here would turn into the cylinder, and it would go back like that into the cylinder. So that's how you could shift a knee or an arm slightly by just kind of cutting, because the knee is, is kind of shaped like this, I don't want to say a peanut, but there's a bend right here in between the knee. The knee bends right there. Where's my uh, eraser? Junkie table. Can't find your supplies. We still good, camera? So yeah, so that's how you can tell uh, if you bend your knee, how to bend your knee or not. You're gonna add some front to your knee. You don't have that on an opening a little bit, but since it's not, and this goes back, and it's here. And actually, when you bend your foot back, you should be right actually on your buttocks. If you stoop down, Unless your foot is, your leg is twisted out a little bit. When you stoop down, you your buttocks will be resting on your heels. Heels, yeah. So put that foot there, bend it at the toe, in front of the toe, like that. So because this one is coming up, this is going to push all of this over, push all of this crotch area over. So it's going to come up like this, and then I'm going to have my circle, which is going to be more of a almost an oval with just a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of shape to it. Then, as I said, I put my knee here. So my circle for where I would connect the other half of the leg is going to be right here. So basically, this is going to be my knee right here. Then I'm going to come down, and then I can come down. I give it a curve, come down and down, and right under your knee, you start to have that calf. That calf comes out and then curves. Because this is your shin bone, and your shin bone goes right down to your ankle. And then I'll do this for my foot, kind of come straight down for the inner foot, and then out for the side of the foot. Now you can actually, if you want to see some heel, you can do the ankle. Inner ankle is higher than the outer ankle. You can come down like this, stop right there, and then do a little side like that. And that'll show you, give you a little bit of a heel to show you for those people just, you know, want to do the heel. So this is going to be like this, a little bit of... Um, on a shin, shin, here's my knee, here's the rest of my leg, so I'm going to see all this part in the thigh, it's going to be like this, and I'm going to have this here, there's a muscle here, this can come out and in, adding a little extra curve, but this is going to be pressed up against the bottom of this, so it's really not going to be flat. Now, I'll actually change the arm positions, and I'll show you what I'm saying about you will see so many different positions by just changing the arms and the legs. So remember, this is going to be one piece. I shouldn't have done that, but I just did it. It's going to connect to the chest. There. So your head, as I said before in, I think, my other video, don't bring your chin past this try not to bring it past this i know some angles it may look like that way but when you're drawing try not to bring your chin past this bottom of this v keep it in there you can have it touch it and that shows he's crouching low the higher the lower you bring your head into this shape the lower 
it is, the more action it shows, the more he's crouching. So if I did this and I put his head up here, you can see the difference. And then he brought his neck down. You can see the difference. Kind of like he's peeking up over, you know, uh, a wall or something. He's just peeking up to see if they're still shooting. So I can bring his head down just a little bit more. And then it kind of looked like he just dropped down in that position. Now he's looking at you because that's more of a straight on look. Let me erase this back because I don't want that to look like his eye is going through there. It's kind of like he's looking up like, huh? Huh? Or yeah, you see that cool landing I did? You know, so if I take it down a little bit more. So I'll bring it all the way down this time. Then it kind of looks like he's like ready for action. That gives you that more of a that dramatic, that dramatic. I'm about to jump up into you kind of thing. And if you put the put the, I can put the the eye like he's looking right at me, you know, about to come get you, kind of thing. Let me straighten the eye up a little bit more, like that. It's like yeah, I just dropped down from the ceiling. Now I'm about to tear off into you, or you can put it down a little bit. Like, you know, he's still kind of at that down point, like his head is down. I don't even want to really look at you because, you know, I'm pissed and I'm about to, you know, when I throw my head up to see you, I'm about to come right at you sideways like a spider monkey. Yeah, Talladega Nights. I love that when that little boy said that. So, yeah, try to bring that head in. Don't bring it past the chin. It just kind of looks crazy now so I got this I can throw the arms back out but let's say I just do this I'll just bring this bicep here and I'll, I will bring the arm here and here's my fist right there so by using the same thing I have a totally different position so I don't know what would I do with this well, I could do the same thing here with the two fists I could uh, if I brought it back more this delt would have to go back more if I brought it back, but let's just say, let's just say I brought it back more. And however, I would put the hand. Would that hand go? No, that thumb would be on the other side, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Thumb would be like here somewhere. Would it? Yeah, I'm gonna be on the outside, outside facing away. It'll be this would be this way. Okay, my dyslexia moment is happening right now. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, so it you can do a number of positions. Yes, the thumb would be here. I don't know why I didn't just look at the first original hand and say, yeah, Brian, the thumb is this way. You can bring it back. Uh, I don't know what else you can do to it. But the more you bring that, the more you pull that arm back or away. This has to follow because this is actually considered part of the arm. So let's just say. I'll put this one hand here, put this thumb down here. hand down here so you're gonna have this delt or this delt this this part of the arm and you probably won't see the um, bicep because the bicep is going to be behind all of this so you can you can and this would probably come down more because as I say the more you, wherever you move that arm this this has to move with it as well your delt has to move with it as well so again, I can put both arms up like this. I can put both arms down. I can put the arms back. I can put the elbow back and then down. And I trust me when I say I had I didn't plan on going this deep with this lesson. I was just trying to show you guys um, the best way to draw something. So if I put the elbow like back, like this, and the arm coming here, like that.
you have kind of like another drawing, but of course you would have to push this back again as well, as I say. So just for the sake of, um, what do you call that in the army when everything has to be lined up perfectly? Symmetry. Is this symmetry? Uh, whatever. I'm going to put this other arm down here like this. So this, this arm is going back because if I'm doing the cylinder, the cylinder is going to be like this. And this cylinder is going to be coming to the front. So as I say, master those shapes that I showed you that you have to master. There's, there's only a few shapes to draw when you're doing uh, a person anyway. When you're drawing basically anything, it's just shapes, just master how to turn and twist and so forth and so on. So if I did this. And should be down a little bit more if I'm right there. You won't really see the lats when you're doing that because this chest is pulling back. So back here you have your you have your neck, which you probably can't see because it's going to stop at this point. The neck is going to come up. But if my chin is down here, you really won't see. I always drew crooked heads. I always screw my heads up. You won't see the neck too much. You have this. It goes up into here. This shapes like a U because you have this lump here, this lump there, and that is your trap. Delt traps, yeah, your trapezius muscle right there. And these go around the back of the, your traps. Like that, of course, I say you have your rib cage, it goes up like that. You have your ab, maybe, maybe your second ab. Maybe it's a line or something, but if you're really doing this, all this would be in shadow. This is that's a good way to get out. It's a shadow. It's a it's a good out out. It's a good out. Yeah. So if I'm drawing uh, a costume or something, these are going to be pants anyway. You can't see that, but all of this would be in shadow. Yeah. I'll just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, shadow. Depending on the light, let's just say I'll do some fancy smancy stuff. Here's my light coming this way. So all of this is a shadow. This is coming up, so I could do some of this in shadow because he's leaning, kind of leaning over the legs a little bit. This could be in shadow. This would definitely be in shadow because it's 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 um it sucks in. So I can have actually want to be crazy and put all of that in shadow, and maybe a little bit over here. And of course, all this would be in shadow because it's under. And they said this, and you can. Lay this out right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make this shadow a little, little more right here. Shadow could be here, could be here, depending on where your light is. Could be here and just kind of like uh, feather out. Uh, definitely would be down here because your light would be hitting here, depending on your where your light source is. Is that could be depending on your light source where your shadow for your head. It's going to be a little thicker in shadow and maybe up in here you can do some flaring or feathering because maybe you don't want that much shadow up under there. So there's a lot you can do with that and I don't shadow because I don't want it to be, how do I say, I don't want a drawing that I do to be not permanent, but I don't want it to be like, oh, this is how you have to draw the shadow because it could be a light right here. It could be, it could be, you know, a light bulb. You know, just right there on on the on the floor. He could be on the stage. He could be a stage performer, and here's your light coming here. So all your shadow is going to be in the back. You don't know. It could be he just you know busts open that door, and all your light is here. So all of this could be shadowed. Everything could be shadowed because you know that the light is coming from that door that he just broke into. So it's this is why I don't do a lot of shadowing because I leave it up to you to do your shadow. So recap, recap, it's 45 minutes. I don't think I have any cuts. There is a lot of books out there that teaches you different ways to draw, to start drawing. Because when we're young or, or new to art or when we want to get into art, we'll see a picture and we want to draw that. How do we start to draw that? So forget this eight head thing. It works when you're standing up. I'm not, I'm not taking it away from any of the, the creators who said that. But when you lean down, you won't be eight heads tall. Um, the box, kind of get away from the box, unless you just 
trying to do like perspective, unless you have to do perspective, because I will do a character like this if um, if the character is small, if I have a bunch of characters, and I will use his shoulders to do other characters and put them in perspective. But I don't really do the box thing, you know, stay away from that and definitely kind of stay away from this because, yeah, I show you how to take a stick figure and turn it into a uh, regular character. But it only works when you're having your character straight up and down. You can do this. Here's your waist. Come down again that you got this part of the leg, got this part of the leg, just make another, basically you're just adding meat to that character. Stuff they don't show you. I'm gonna come out with a drawing book. I keep seeing that and I'm working on it, but I'm working on so much at the same time. So that's how you can take that little stick figure and turn that person, turn that figure into a character with some meat on them. All right, so I'm gonna let this one go and Start working on my next one because officially this is a day late so just remember these shapes just remember the shapes that it takes to do the body and then draw these shapes and draw them and draw them if you have something around the house that you can use that is a shape like that get it and then draw it like I got this from work you know here's your, here's your typical square what does it look like from the top what does it look like from the bottom but if you see both sides both sides and the top so just start drawing those things uh, for their shape just to get practice in and then you'll be ready to do stuff like this If you follow my teachings follow my instructions go to my YouTube channel and See the videos that I have The teachings that I have I guarantee you money back guarantee that within 30 days or less you will become Three times better a drawer than you are now. All right. I'm going to in this with this and yes these arms are just a tad bit long because I was kind of rushing I think if I had cut it right here and put the hands right here but I was rushing so it's just just a just a tad bit long so that's gonna be it for this video I will see you guys in the next video and thank you for the 20,000 subscribers all oh, you did 20,000 you guys you got my love you got my love thank you very much so the rest of you guys who are not subscribed please subscribe all it takes is just a Push it a button, a flick of the wrist, a whatever, dunk shot, whatever. Just subscribe and help me grow so I can go on a full scale every day drawing and get into some more stuff for you guys. All right, that's it. I will ramble. I'm not going to ramble. I'm going to let you guys go, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.